Welcome to the video adaptation of the Cargo Quick Start. Our goal today is to demonstrate how Cargo can progress a change from one environment to another by interacting with the GitOps repository and Argo CD applications. In the interest of time, I've already provisioned a kind cluster and installed Cargo and its prerequisites into that cluster using Helm. The kind cluster also has some port forwarding setup so that we can easily access our Argo CD dashboard in three different instances of our example application. The first thing we're going to do is visit the Acuity Cargo Demo repository, fork it to our own GitHub account, and have a look around. This repository uses Customize as a configuration management tool, and we can see that the layout of this repository is pretty typical. We've placed configuration that is common or almost common to all environments in a base directory. If we look at that, we see manifests for a deployment and a service. The example application that we're using today is just Nginx, but we want to do two things differently from one environment to the next. Purely for demonstration purposes, we want to serve slightly different content from each environment, just to make it clear to us which environment we're looking at. We also want the service in each environment to use a different node port. If we look at the env directory, we'll see several subdirectories, each of which is a customized overlay that provides some environment-specific content in the form of a config map and also patches the service with an environment-specific node port. I won't go any deeper than this into customize, but what's important to note, however, is that this is a pretty typical use of customize and nothing in this repository is cargo specific in any way. Now, because we'll be needing it shortly, I'm going to go ahead and create a personal access token that we'll use for writing to our fork. Next, we're going to set a few environment variables purely for convenience sake. Now we're going to go ahead and create three namespaces that we'll use for hosting three instances of our example application. We'll also create three Argo CD application resources for managing each of those instances. If we look at each of these, we can see that each points to a different environment-specific customized overlay. We've also included repository credentials in the form of a specially formatted Kubernetes secret. Up to this point, we've done almost nothing differently from anyone using Customize and Argo CD without Cargo. The only thing done differently is that we used credentials that allow us to write to the repository as well as read from it. Argo CD doesn't write to the repository, but Cargo will. If we visit our Argo CD dashboard now, we'll see all three applications. None of them are synced yet because AutoSync is not enabled. Now we're going to go ahead and create a namespace that we'll use as a container of sorts for our cargo resources. The first resources we're going to create are promotion policies for each of our cargo environments. Cargo relies mainly on Kubernetes RBAC for authorization. But Kubernetes RBAC is not sophisticated enough to say, for instance, that a user is authorized to promote to the test or stage environment, but not the prod environment. So every cargo environment should have a promotion policy that explicitly states who's authorized to promote into that environment. Promotion policies also specify whether auto promotion is enabled or not. Now we're going to create our cargo environment resources. The role of an environment is to describe where changes come from, how to apply them, and how to assert environment health. We could create all three of our environments at once, but because we enabled auto promotion for the test and stage environments, things would move pretty quickly through those two if we did. So we're going to create the environments one by one so we have the opportunity to stop and talk about each one and observe what Cargo is doing at each step. First, we have our test environment, and we can see that it has a subscription to the Nginx repository on Docker Hub and it subscribes to new semantically tagged images greater than 1.24.0 and less than 2.0.0. 0. 
We also see some promotion mechanism. One will apply the command customize edit set image to a specific customize overlay whenever a new version of the Nginx image is discovered. The other will force the corresponding Argo CD application to refresh and sync. After creating this resource, a number of things happen. The cargo controller will pretty quickly find the latest version of the Nginx image matching our constraint. And because auto promotion is enabled, we'll create a promotion resource to affect that change. If we query for promotion resources in the cargo demo namespace, we should be able to see that promotion. We can also query the test environment directly to see the same information. We can see that the customization.yaml file in our test overlay has been updated with information about the latest Nginx image. We can now hop back to our Argo CD dashboard to see that the application is now synced and healthy. We can also visit the application directly in our web browser. Our stage environment is not all that different from our test environment, but you'll notice that it does not subscribe directly to the Nginx repository on Docker Hub. Instead, it subscribes to the upstream test environment, so Stage learns about new Nginx images after they've successfully been deployed to test. After creating this resource, the cargo controller will once again find new state pretty quickly, and because auto promotion is enabled, will create a new promotion to affect that change. If we once again query for promotion resources in the cargo demo namespace, we should be able to see that promotion. We can also query the stage environment directly to see that it has entered the desired state. If we visit the Argo CD dashboard, we can now see that the stage application is synced and healthy. We can also visit the application in our web browser. This brings us to the production environment, which is not very different from stage. The biggest difference is that the promotion policy associated with this environment, which we created earlier, does not permit auto-promotion. After creating this resource, we'll see that no promotion resource is automatically created. If we look closely at the production environment's status, however, we can clearly see that the new state has been found and is available. We can now manually create a promotion resource to advance this environment into the desired state. If we once again query for promotion resources in the cargo demo namespace, we can see that this promotion is now complete. We can also query the prod environment directly to see the same information. We can also see that the cargo demo prod application in Argo CD is synced and healthy. And we can visit the running application in our browser. Now that our pipeline is up and running, if a new Nginx image were published to the Nginx repository on Docker Hub, that change would flow seamlessly through our test and stage environments and then wait to be promoted into production by an authorized user. This is one of the simplest use cases for Cargo, so it's worth pointing out that much more sophisticated things are possible. For instance, in a more complex case, one may wish to subscribe to multiple image repositories and a Git repository, and when new materials are found in any of those locations, combine them all into a new state and progress that through the environments. I think we'll tackle that use case in our next video. Until then, this has been the Cargo Video Quick Start. Thanks for tuning in.